Hello everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Cal with me, Teacup Jojo, today. And today we are doing some more joining techniques um, of how to join your squares or anything else you have um, that you might want to join in your crochet. So today we are doing the baseball stitch and we are also doing the flat braid join. So the first one being baseball stitch, um, we make with our big chunky blunt needle um, that we can put our yarn in. So you need your blunt needle. You'll need obviously your squares or whatever you're going to join, your scissors, and as always, a cup of tea or coffee. So I've got my nice big mug of coffee here today. Okay, so we're gonna get straight on with the baseball stitch. Um, and the only thing to say is this is not how baseballs are stitched. Um, but it kind of resembles the pattern of the stitches on baseballs. Um, so it isn't actually how they are stitched, um, just to clarify that before we go any further. Um, yeah, so it's called baseball stitch because it resembles the pattern on the baseball. And it does give a really nice finish um, to your work. Um, and depending on whether you use um, the same colour yarn or a um, a different colour yarn as to how much you see that pattern um, or how much it blends in. Okay, it's quite a quick stitch to do. Um, if you remember uh, me doing the whip stitch, which is in the playlist, if you click on the um, icon of the channel, um, it's whip stitch is very quick and um, this is also very quick. It just gives you a nicer, um, more of a feature. Okay, so I'm going to use um, a nice um, bold colour so you can see what stitches I'm doing um, on my squares. Okay, so the first thing to do is put the scissors out of the way. And um, the first thing to do is you want to put your squares the right sides together. So the front of the squares need to be together. Okay, so... I'm now looking at the back of my work and the back of the works on there, okay? And then what you want to do, zoom the camera in a bit so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So what you want to do is go into your first stitch or the corner, whichever um, happens to be, on the back square. So we're going to call this the front square, the one that's on top closest to me and the one behind I'm going to call the back square okay so in the back square you want to go into the first stitch although I'm going to go into the actual corner which is a chain so go under the two bars of the chain so if I bring this up here hopefully the camera will focus or it won't okay so if we remember a chain has three parts so I've got one loop underneath and two loops on top. So go from the inside, so this is the inside part, go from the inside, under those two bars, out to the back, and then leave a nice long tail for sewing in afterwards and securing. I'm just gonna tuck that in there and hold that out of the way. And then come back to this front square, come back to the front square, and again, under those two loops of the chain, if it's a chain, or if it's a stitch, you want to go under those top two loops of the stitch. Okay, and again, you're going from the inside, so the inside and towards you. Okay, and then pull that. Now, the only thing to, um, to remind you um, for the stitch is that um, if you've seen me do the mattress stitch, you can tighten that up at the end. This one, you can't tighten at the end. However um, tight or loose it is, it's how it will stay. So I suggest you do one or two stitches and then just do a little tug on it um, to make it how you want it to be. Okay, so then you're going to go back over the top of this front one. So over the top of the front one, I'm gonna go again to the back square and you're going to go into the next stitch. So under those two loops, my camera's being silly and keeps trying to focus. So 
under those two loops make sure you're going into the next stitch not the same one so under those two loops going towards the back and pull three now this last one will always be loose because of that tail okay so don't worry about these first few stitches of their tension okay and then you're going to come back to this front one and again check where that stitch where that um, yarn's coming from so you go into the correct stitch and again from inside towards you go under that next stitch and pull through so you can see each time it's going over the edges okay making this sort of crisscross almost a sort of herringbone shape I guess okay and then you're going to go to the next stitch on the back square so again from front to back under there and pull through okay and then from back to front on this front square under that next stitch there we go again from front to back under the next stitch of the back square pull through now I'm making this kind of a loosest tension I'm not putting it too tight I'm leaving it so that we can see the stitches and it does give a little bit of a feature when we have finished okay so then again from the back to the front just check which stitch that's through if you've got particularly small stitches you will need to check um, which is the next stitch to go through just pull through there okay so we've got this really nice crisscrossy type of um, design going on so you can see why um, it has the name baseball stitch okay so to the back square from the front to the back and through and then from the back to the front this square like so okay and then you're going to keep going all the way down I'm going to do some of this off camera so you don't have to sit and watch me do this whole six inches okay so I'm going to keep going along here and then I'm going to show you what happens when it's um, when you get to the end and you want to join the next square okay so I've joined um, all of these two squares together I've gone all the way along and um, you can continue to join more squares um, without having to fasten off um, all you need to do is get your next two squares with the right sides together just as you had and what you can do is if you've got lots of squares to join together what I would suggest is that you pair your squares up and have them ready with those right sides joined um, right sides together sorry and then have um, a pile of your squares so um, maybe just alternate them like so um, grab a couple more you just have them in a pile like so so that once you've got to the end of one you can just pick up the next two and continue and then you can just keep picking up and continuing along um, without having to keep stopping and grabbing two and putting them together um, okay, so what you do is you've got to the end and then all you would do is pick up your next two squares, line them up and then you would just, um, where are we, we're on the front here, so I'm going to go over to the back of the next one. Now the first two or three stitches may be a bit tricky, but you just kind of have to bear with it. So I'm going to go into this stitch on the corner and putting them down together we'll just zoom in a moment there we go hopefully that's better there i forgot to zoom in again after stopping okay so go into the back one and then come over and into the front one again exactly the same way as you have done before the only reason i'm doing this flat on the table is because you don't want a big um, gap from this um this join here okay and then i'm going to go over to the back like so and then back over to the front and then once you've done a few stitches and it's secure 
and you've got the tension how you want it to be then you can pick it up and if you want to you can kind of hold that other one behind and then have this one in the front and then you can just work it there whilst taking the weight of the back square it's the weight of the square that kind of um, would pull it out of out of shape pull the pull on those stitches okay so then you just continue in exactly the same way as you did on the last two squares and then if you can see here I've accidentally gone into the same stitch okay so this is what happens if you accidentally go into the same stitch or if you're trying to even the stitch count because you've got too many um, it doesn't make too much of a difference but it does show um, so just to show you that there that um, it does show if you go into two into the same stitch twice but it's not too bad and if you've got a if you've got a big project you know a cushion or a blanket an afghan then I think in the whole whole thing it won't really show very much you can see it there yourself but it's not going to notice in in a big big project so you would just continue like that now this is pulling because I sort of let go a bit but um, you just loosen it up a bit more and can make it right when you come up on the other side so you just continue along here and then you would um, when you get to the end of these two then you could take another two squares and continue along on those two squares Okay, and then what happens when you've got a whole strip of um, squares joined in this way? What do you do then? Well, what you would then do is you would open your squares up and fold it the other way. So you would um, fasten this off. This would all be down the bottom. You would fold it in the opposite way and um, you would then join it's in exactly the same way along here you'd start in this corner here just as you did um, here start in this corner and then work your way along and exactly the same when you come to the um, where the two squares move over you would just continue exactly the same way but this is the way you can kind of pull this yarn up and kind of work over it if it's a bit loose okay and then just continue along to the end and then you would just keep continuing and then you would do that for every strip okay so you just join your strips together um, one way join them all along okay so maybe you were doing 10 strips of 10 so you would um, have your 10 squares along here all sewn together and then you would um, sew them the other way and then you would take another set of strips and you would start to join them along here okay so that is how you do the baseball stitch let me open it out and show you so this is what the back looks like okay this is the back and then this is the front so very very similar the front and the back this is what the front looks like you can see the resemblance to baseball, especially if I'd have done that in red, you'd have probably noticed it even more. So this is the baseball stitch. I love it. I think it's really, really pretty. And it just adds a nice little feature um, other than just regular stitching. And it is quite quick to do. Um, and the fact that you can just continue down making your strips um, and um, not having to keep fastening off too much. Um, and then just remember to weave your end in, go down um, on the back, go down, then up, down, up. Make sure it's it's um, gone back and forth a few times to make it very secure. The worst thing is to make something you spend hours and hours on and then to have it just unravel. Some of you may remember me showing you a cushion I made that started unraveling because I didn't, didn't sew the ends in well enough and I've got a big hole in it now so um yeah make sure it's all um nice and secure go back and forth back and forth um with this tail until it's nice and secure okay so that is the beautiful baseball stitch i love it love it okay mm -hmm.